Hey, my name is Frederick, and you are watching a shinemportal.com swimwear manufacturers tutorial. I was about to say video tutorial, but what the heck? Let's get to it. Swimwear manufacturing in China is the topic of today's video. Okay, so in this video, I will explain how you can find the right supplier in this category, why you should not buy wholesale swimwear, how to customize the design, how to select the right fabrics and what you need to know when going for private label products. Let's get to it. Okay, so swimwear is, is a broad category and uh, even within this industry supplies tend to be focused on one or two different products. Okay, so never, don't see this as one unified category. Instead, you will find that some suppliers they are, they make, for example, bikinis and and yeah, these like billabong sideboard shorts because the fabrics they use and so on and the cuttings etc. They are in the same category, quite similar. But if you're looking for something that's more high tech, like uh, wetsuits for diving and so on, uh, it's a, it's a different kind of supplier. So you will not find that within the same company. Okay, so. When you when you source suppliers from Alibaba or Global Sources, you need to look at the, the main category. So if you're looking for bikinis, you have to look for a supplier that's specifically making bikinis. Okay, so how can you identify a good supplier? And as I said, uh, a proper factory, they specialize in one or two categories. They don't make 15 different categories, okay? Because then it's more likely to be a trading company. A good supplier should also have test reports, and this refers to chemicals and heavy metals, such uh, well, the REACH regulation in the EU, which covers hundreds of different substances. Okay, so they should be able to provide some sort of test report to show that hey, we have previously made compliant swimwear. Most suppliers have not. Okay, and it's your responsibility to ensure compliance. So this is that's a pretty important step. Three, we have something that's fairly rare in the textiles industry overall, and that's quality management certification, like ISO 9001. I guess it's because quality management is not that complicated in textiles, um, if you compare it to say electronics or something like that. So it's quite rare to find. It's a good thing if they have it, but I would never dump a supplier, at least in this industry, if they don't, okay? But something that do really matters is social compliance. Um, and this refers to worker conditions, worker safety, fire exits, and so on. It's not really about child labor, because child labor is extremely rare, uh, at least in China today. Uh, you can find it in some other Asian countries, but not really in, in mainland China. But there are other work, working, work condition issues, like blocked fire exits, etc., etc. Uh, sprinkler systems and so on and uh, for that reason it's a great thing if they have say a SEDEC certification SA8000 or BSCI which is actually the most common one and the great thing about social compliance is that it tends to go hand in hand with product quality and it sounds strange but the, the reason is that there is a correlation between suppliers that bother to get inspected because they have to pay for this and that's because they want to reach out to well serious buyers they want to reach out to major brands in say in the west or in japan or korea brands that have higher requirements you know when when, when they are getting this social compliance certification then they get that because they want to attract more buyers they don't do it for fun trust me on that uh, or to feel good about good about themselves it's I know how they think and that's not the reason. It's, it's to make more money. But you know, if, if that goes hand in hand with giving them uh, a better workplace, then that's a great thing, right? So that's one more reason why I really take social compliance certification, especially SEDEX and BSCI, very seriously when sourcing swimwear suppliers or actually suppliers uh, in any, well, any kind of textile. I, I really value social compliance certification. Okay. Now, design customization options. You can either go for custom design apparel or ODM private label apparel. Okay, so you have do these two different options. 
most suppliers in this industry, when it comes to swimwear, they are accustomed to getting a tech pack, okay? This means you provide them with patterns, with a BOM, with labels and so on. And some of them may have some private label items, but don't expect them to give you a big catalog. Yeah, pick and choose whatever you want. It doesn't really work like that, especially not in the textiles industry. Instead, they expect the, the, the buyer to provide them with the tech packs, with the spec sheets, with the patterns and so on. So, yeah, that's the way it works. Now, what should you include in your tech pack? First, you should have a pattern. And you can go to a pattern maker, you can use techpacker.com, you can go on upwork.com. You have a few different options. Second, you need to provide a, a material specification. Okay, and that could be 90, well, 8% cotton or 2% spandex, whatever. Uh, for swimwear you may have um, slightly more advanced fabrics. And you may need to provide a sample fabric. Okay? You need to provide a bill of materials, that's number three. And a bill of materials is, is, is a component list basically. Saying that, okay, for this uh, Model A you need to provide, well it's got two buttons in this material, one zipper and so on so that the supply can see exactly what components do they need to make each product, okay? So that's a BOM, and four we have label files. And keep in mind that label files must be designed according to product regulations. Uh, so if you're based in the United States, you need to make sure that you have the right care label files, uh, sorry, the right care label symbols, uh, a country of origin, the fabric specification, and in the EU you have a different set of requirements for for the, for the textiles label labels. So uh, you can't just make a cool label and hope for the best. It doesn't work like that because if you import a non-compliant product and that's a product that is say non-compliant with the labeling requirements, then the customs can just decide to destroy the product. Okay, and the suppliers don't have label files. They don't keep track of they don't keep track of regulations in the US or the EU or anywhere for that matter. It's not their job. They get a label file from, 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 from their buyers and they make what you want them to make. <laughs> if you don't provide them with anything, they just don't give you a label and then you can't import that product. Now, can't you just send a sample to the factory and expect them to replicate that? Well, yes and no. The thing is that if you were to send out samples to every supplier that you get in touch with, and that would be, well, it could be 10, 15 suppliers, that would be extremely expensive. Sending uh, product samples from the US or Europe to China is going to cost you about 50 USD per delivery, per sample. Take that times, uh, times 15, 750 USD just to send a bunch of samples. That's not a good investment. Okay, so you need to send them a tech pack. They give you prices, and once you have give it, once they've given you prices, you can send them a reference sample as a complement to the tech pack to make a counter sample. That's how it works. Okay, but then again, what if you just send them a sample and then you go for production and it's different? And you say, yeah, but the sample I sent to you is not what the product looks like they don't match and you don't have a reference sample so how can you prove that so you have a long list of reasons for why you need to provide them a tech pack you need to provide the patterns the BOM all this paperwork and you need to provide them with a reference sample but you can't just send a reference sample it's a question I get all the time and I understand why because it's not easy that way but you can't well you shouldn't do that nobody that has experience in the textiles industry does that for very good reasons